The American Jewish Music Festival at UCLA held on March 1st, 2020, was a really unique experience because it allowed us at UCLA to work out a vision of showing the range of Jewish music that is active, alive, and vibrant today. We went through so many iterations of what the festival would look like, thinking about what was the message that we wanted our festival to bring. What we were looking at was how Jewish music and Jewish culture intersected in various ways around the United States with American culture and created something new and beautiful and exciting. Well, it's about time that there's a festival like the UCLA American Jewish Music Festival. It's amazing that there hasn't been something like that up till now, but it's a welcome addition to the scene, both internationally and, I would say, locally within the Southern California area. The fact that the festival is headquartered on a university campus and such a renowned campus as UCLA makes the festival very unique and enhances the opportunity that the festival has to play a role in disseminating Jewish music to wider groups of people. Our band, Nefesh Mountain, is all about the soul. And, um, and often when we tell people we play Jewish bluegrass, they laugh. <laughs> but as you can, uh, hopefully you can feel from what we're presenting with you, to you and, and this music that it's, it's truly um, spiritual and authentic. And, um, and this music is such a beautiful vehicle for pure joy and sorrow and, and all of it. We have our songs that are based on liturgical ideas. We have songs based on teachings. We have songs that are about our own family's history in World War II, referencing the Holocaust and our families in Eastern Europe prior to the Holocaust, and also Anne Frank, and there's a very uplifting song we have about her, and that's part of our Judaism. That's our history. Way back in 1943, she lived inside her diary, in days beneath the darkest skies, with a burning ember deep inside. Nefesh Mountain tries to embody the elements of life, which is what Judaism also does. Where, oh, where are the sweetest songs of Miriam and her daughters? They were sung beside the seas and tides. So still must be out on the waters, still on the waters. As men sat for me, los mutaros, for me mutsin me come the program Music Breaking Barriers, which was a collaboration of the incredible Yiddish singers Lauren Sklamberg of the Klezmatics and Sasha Luria of many different ensembles and the old time and klezmer fiddle player Craig Udelman. And the three of them explored how Jewish music throughout the centuries has been at the forefront of social change and social justice. Whether it being uh, something from the repertoire of a, of a woman chazan or cantor, whether it be a strike song, there was a song about the cloak maker's strike. There was a song about the rights of working women. It was nice to put all these sorts of songs in one place. Chloe comes at music from a completely different standpoint. She is a first-generation American, her family is Persian, and as a composer has spent the time thinking about how that best connects to her own Jewish spirituality. So while the music that she plays isn't necessarily purely one thing or the other, it is very purely American Jewish. <laughs> I was born and raised 
here in Los Angeles and I've traveled a lot in my life. I've picked up a lot of different music, inspiration from Judaism and the strong, beautiful poetry of also Persian culture. I feel both a sense of ancientness and a sense of modernity at the same time. The liturgy has become a main source of inspiration. I like to just open my sidur and improvise melodically with whatever I'm reading. I was on sabbatical from UCLA, and I asked my colleague James Bass, our director of choral studies at UCLA, if he would conduct one of our concerts with chorus. And we understood that there was a festival of Jewish music that was going on at the same time, and that this concert could serve as kind of the culmination of that. Well, that began a five-week rabbit hole that I went down. I found a work by Erich Korngold called The Passover Hymn. And of course, Arnold Schoenberg is the namesake of our building. So I started to look, and the very first piece that came up on my docket was a piece Schoenberg made of the Col Nudre, and I thought, okay, well, this makes a lot of sense because Korngold and Schoenberg were in Los Angeles at the same time. Neil Stolberg says, have you been associated with the music of Eric Zeisel? So I started to look and found a piece called the Spruch Cantata. All three of those composers on the first half said that Gustav Mahler was one of their inspirations for their compositional style. So we'll have Mahler on the second half representing the inspiration, and then we'll have the three American Jewish composers on the first half. And that's how it became the titans of Jewish music, because they were all connected back to the Mahler Symphony, which has the subtitle, The Titan. I could see the pride in the Jewish students because there was a celebration of music of their tradition. A Muslim student sitting next to a Jewish student, sitting next to a Christian student, sitting next to a student that maybe not practice any of those faiths, all centered in peaceful endeavor to make this music together is something I wish the entire world could see. We certainly hope to have more festivals. It was something that we worked really hard to do. Whether we do a festival just as we did, or we find other ways to create large-scale music programming where people get to engage with multiple ensembles, that should be in our future. We have a lot of programming coming from the Lowell Milken Center over the course of the next year and hopefully for years to come. I